name is Morgan Duvall. I'm a physical therapist at Flagstaff Bone and Joint. And today I'm going to walk you through a set of exercises for your foot and ankle that are to be done immediately post-op during the first three to six week period that you are non-weight bearing and also wearing a cam boot like this one. So if these exercises are appropriate for you, you have recently had a foot or ankle surgery and you've been told by your surgeon that you are not to be weight bearing on your operative foot and that you are to be wearing a boot just like this. You may be ambulating using crutches, maybe a walker, possibly a knee scooter, but regardless, all of the exercises that we are going to do today will be done from a seated or a lying down position so that you do not have to put weight on your operative foot. Okay, so first things first, make sure that you have everything you need before we get going. Um, you will need a towel, just like this one, bath towel. You will need a small ball, possibly a tennis ball, lacrosse ball, I have a therapy ball. And you will also need a strap for stretching. This is not a stretchy strap. This strap has no stretch to it at all. I'm using a yoga strap. You could use something like this or possibly the uh, tie from your bathrobe can work really well additionally. Okay, so we will begin. You should have a list of exercises uh, just like this that was given to you by your surgeon or your physical therapist, possibly me. So if you'd like to get that out, you're welcome to follow along. First thing you're going to do is remove your boots, all right? So make sure you're in a nice seated position, comfortable. Now underneath the boots, you may have an ace bandage or possibly a compression sock. I do not have either of those things on. If you have the ace bandage or the compression sock, just be sure to take that off as well so that you have a bare foot. Now you can place your foot on the ground in front of your chair. Just make sure that you're not putting too much weight on it. It's nice and comfortable. If it feels like it's too hard of a surface, you can always put a yoga mat or a towel, something nice and soft underneath your foot. Okay, the first exercise that we are going to do is called the seated heel and toe raise. This is the first exercise on your list of exercises if you're happening to follow along. So the first exercise, you will simply rise up onto your tippy toes as I'm doing right now then drop your heels back to the ground and lift your toes up. So you're rocking forwards and backwards. Make sure you're not going all the way up onto the very top of your toe like I'm doing right now. This is all about getting a stretch through your big toe. So you should be pushing the ball of your foot right underneath the big toe down onto the ground, okay? Now in terms of range of motion, don't go um, so hard that you're hurting, right? This might be a little bit uncomfortable, you might feel a little bit stiff, but you should not be pushing into any sharp pains right now. So your range of motion may look a little bit different than mine, it may be a little bit smaller, and that's totally okay. Listen to your body and do what feels best. All right, we are going to do two sets of 10 of each one of these exercises. We'll do one set of 10 together right now, and then you can rewind this video at the end and go through the whole thing again to get your second set of 10 in. Okay, so together, seated heel toe raises, rise up onto the tippy toes, that's one, heels down, toes up, then again, number two, heels up, toes down, and heels down, toes up, beautiful. Number three, not so bad so far, right? And slowly lift the toes up. Number four, heels up, and toes up. Remember, your range of motion may be different than mine, that's okay. Work in whatever pace and range of motion feels good to you. That was number five. I don't want any sharp pains here. Number six, you may even feel your calf working a little bit, especially as you rise up onto your tippy toes. Seven, and you may feel a stretch when you lift your toes up. Eight, we have two more. Nine, and then last one is 10. Rise up onto the tippy toes, and then heels down, toes up. Nicely done. All right, we're already through the first one. Second exercise is called toe yoga. It's the second one on your list here. Now, toe yoga is a little bit tricky because what you are going to do is alternate which toe is lifting. So, first thing you're gonna do is lift your big toe up, pressing all of the other four toes down. Then you will swap big toe down, all the other four toes up. If you find this challenging, uh, feel free to use your hands to help. You can put your fingers on the big toe to hold it down while the other four lift up, and then swap, put your fingers on the other four, 
while the big toe lifts up. So totally acceptable here to use your hand to help out if you need it. Eventually your muscles will wake up and they'll be able to do this on their own, but it might not happen right away if we stop, okay? So let's go through 10 repetitions together, all right? So big toe up first, big toe up, other toes down, that's one. Then switch, two, and switch. This is a fantastic exercise for the little intrinsic muscles in your feet. Now we're at number four. So if you find that your toes aren't moving quite a bit, that's okay as long as you're trying, you're still getting that muscle activation, which is so important to support your arch when you go back to weight bearing. We're at number six, almost done. Seven, switch, eight, switch, two more, nine, and then the last one, here we go, is number 10, and switch, finish it off. Not too bad, right? That one can be a little bit tricky for a lot of people, but just do your best and remember it's not about how high your toes get, it's about activating the little muscles in your foot. Okay, next exercise is also a toe exercise. It's called the Toe Series Abduction and Adduction. It's number three on your list here. So what you're going to do here is spread your toes apart and then bring them back together. All right. I think it's a little bit um, more helpful to lift the toes up off the ground before spreading them. If you keep them on the ground, it's kind of hard because the ground gets in your way and it stops you because there's friction there. So I recommend lifting your toes up, spreading them, and then putting them back down. Okay. And again, if you're not getting a lot of motion with this one, it's okay. Don't worry. This is a preparatory exercise to get you ready for going back to weight bearing and walking normally. Uh, it's more about getting the muscles to fire than it is about actually getting your toes to move a lot. So just do your best. Let's do 10 together. Okay, here we go. Lift and spread one. Down. Lift and spread two. I always feel like a duck when I do this one, right? Like really big feet. <laughs> Three. Nice. Four. Beautiful. Keep on going. Keep trying. Five. Nice big spread. Six. Almost done. Seven. Eight. Two more. Nine. And then here's the last one. Ten. Excellent. Not too bad at all, right? Okay. Next exercise is on the second page of your list. We've made it through the first page. And for this exercise, you will need your strap. You can also use a towel, but I do like to use the strap for this. Um, possibly also the tie from your bathroom, as I mentioned earlier. This is a calf stretch. So what you will do, I'm gonna just put our list down for a moment, is you will take your strap and loop it around the ball of your foot. All right, so not the arch like this, not the toes, but it's actually around the ball of your foot, right at the base of your toes. Keep your heel on the ground and straighten your leg. Now you can very gently pull the strap back and you should feel a stretch through your calf. What I don't want you to do is this. I don't want you to round your spine and hunch over because I don't want to give you a back issue while you're stretching out your foot, okay? So make sure you sit up nice and tall, engage your core, sit proud, and gently pull your toes back. Now we'll hold this for about 20 seconds. This is gonna be two to three repetitions of 20 second holds. So right now together, we're just gonna hold for 20 seconds. You should feel that nice deep stretch. Remember, you should not be feeling any sharp pains here. So if you do have any sharp pains, back off a little bit, right? It might be a little stiff, it might be a little uncomfortable, but this should not be painful. So nice and gentle, hold it for the last three, two, and one. Release the tension. We'll roll right into the next stretch, which is very, very similar, but this time you're actually going to bend your knee a little bit. The reason for the knee bend is because it stretches a slightly different muscle in your calf, that's called your soleus. The first stretch was more of a general calf stretch. Bending your knee biases a smaller muscle in your calf, which is called the soleus, okay? So, slight bend in the knee. Other than that, everything else is exactly the same. Gently pull your foot up, and you might feel the stretch a little bit closer to your heel and your Achilles tendon now. All right, so we'll hold this for about 20 seconds. It should feel good, again, should not be painful. If anything, it should feel nice to move your foot, right? You, your foot's in a can boot most of the day. You're not moving it a whole lot. This should feel really, really good to get the foot moving. Sit up nice and tall. Pull back a little harder as long as it's not painful. Nice big stretch. 
Hold for three, two, and one. You can gently release the tension on that strap. Take your strap and just place it down on the ground. The next exercise should feel really good. It is uh, rolling out the bottom of your foot with your ball. So find your ball. I'm using this purple therapy ball here. I like therapy balls for rolling out the bottom of the foot. They're a little softer than lacrosse balls, but a little harder than uh, tennis balls, right? So they have a nice give to them, but you can still kind of get into that plantar fascia and find areas of restriction. Um, if you want to buy a therapy ball, you can find them on Amazon, pretty much anywhere on the internet. You would literally just Google therapy ball and you'll find lots of different options. The one I'm using is called Active Pro Zone. I like it a lot. Got it on Amazon. Okay, so this ball is going to go underneath the ball of, or rather the um, bottom of your foot, and you will very gently apply some pressure onto that ball. Okay, it's very gentle and it should feel good. You can roll back and forth like I'm doing right now and just find areas of restriction on the bottom of your foot and try to like kind of get a little bit of friction right there in that area of restriction, right? A lot of times post-op, the area of restriction tends to be like right at the ball of the foot underneath the toes and also back at the heel. So find what feels good to you, roll back and forth. We will do two to three sets of one minute, just rolling back and forth side to side, just to open up the tightness on the bottom of your foot. It is so common in post-op to have a lot of restriction in the little muscles that make up the bottom of your foot. And this ball rolling technique is gonna be so helpful to loosen them and really just to make you feel good, right? This is one of my favorite exercises to give to post-op evening. Okay, so we'll keep rolling for about a minute here. And again, just find that spot that feels good and kind of just like friction into that a little bit, break up any restriction in your plantar fascia. Remembering that um, not weight bearing doesn't mean you can't push the ball gently onto the bottom of your foot, right? You just can't put your full body weight down on your foot. So pushing a very gentle amount onto this ball is not gonna be a problem. Make sure that you're not pushing so hard ah, that it hurts, right? This should be super, super gentle and this should feel really good. Okay, it has been about a minute, so let's get rid of the ball for now and we are going to move on to arch lifts. Now, arch lifts are a bit tricky. I think that this is the most tricky exercise that uh, we are going through in this particular video. So just so you can see, I'm actually going to do the arch lifts on my right foot. I know I've been demoing with my left foot mostly, but I think you'll be able to see if I use my right foot. So what you're going to do with the arch lift is you will actually imagine as though there is a string attached to your arch and it is picking your arch up, right? You can use your toes a little bit here as you squeeze your foot together. Make sure you're not like gripping with the toes like this. The toes are going to stay straight out, but they can pull in a little bit as you lift and lower the arch. So remember the ball rollout that we just did? Well, that was to loosen up the little muscles on the bottom of your foot. And this exercise is to strengthen the little muscles on the bottom of your foot so that they can support your arch when you get back to walking normally without your boot, okay? So let's do 10 repetitions. All right, and I'm just gonna use my hand to show you what's happening here. We lift up one, lower, lift up two, lower. You should feel a contraction underneath your foot. Four. Yes, you may even see your arch lift a little bit. Five. Good. Squeeze the foot together. Six. Awesome. Seven. Almost done. Eight. Two more. Nine. And last one. Ten. All right, nicely done. That's a tough one. Again, if you find that it's kind of hard to make that one happen, don't worry, it'll come. Like the toe yoga, it's difficult uh, to get those little intrinsic muscles in your foot to work after surgery, so don't worry if that was tough. Just keep working at it and it should get easier. Okay, the next few exercises on your list are actually in a lying down position, so we're going to skip over them. There are four clamshell exercises. We're gonna skip those and come back to them. And we are going to move on to the hamstring curls and the long arc quad. So the hamstring curls are on your list on their own page, okay? That is if you've got one of the um, lists like I did where it printed out kind of funky. If not, it might, be, might not be on its own page, but it should be right after the clamshells, okay? What you are going to do is use your towel. I have a pretty big towel here, so I'm going to fold it up 
Uh, you'll probably do a little bit better with like um, a dish towel or a washcloth. I just got a big towel with me today, so I'm going to use it. All right, so you're going to place your operative foot on the towel and you're gonna sit on the edge of your chair just like this. So this exercise is uh, twofold. It's going to activate your hamstring, but it's also going to stretch through your foot and ankle. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So the first thing you're gonna do is try to slide your foot forwards and now make sure that the bottom of your foot stays on the towel. So don't let it lift up like this, okay? Keep it down and you should feel like you're getting a stretch through the top of your foot. And then slowly slide it underneath your chair. Keep your heel down, don't let your heel come up like this. And you should get a stretch through your Achilles and possibly also some compression in the front of your ankle. All right, so you're gonna slide forwards and backwards 10 times just like this. Remember that you are not pushing into pain here, only into possibly a gentle stretch, maybe a little discomfort, but no pain. Okay, I've done two already, we're gonna keep on rolling. This is three. This is four, you won't have to wash or mop your floor after this exercise. <laughs> this is five. We have number six. Number seven, almost done. Maybe you can even pull your heel back a little bit more now that it's loosening up. Eight. Nine. And 10. Okay, nicely done. Get rid of your towel for now. And we are going to do the long arc quad exercise. This is the last one on your list. Scoot your butt back in your chair a little bit. So maybe your feet are even dangling. If you're short like me, your feet might dangle. If they don't, don't worry about it, it's okay. From here, we're going to work the quadricep. Okay, so this one is um, not really focused on the foot and ankle at all. This is more for the quadricep muscle. The reason for this exercise is because when you do go back to weight bearing, you're gonna want a strong quadricep. This is the muscle that stabilizes your knee and helps um, maintain your balance, right? And it's gonna get really weak during a period of non-weight bearing, so it's important to exercise it during this time, okay? So from here, sitting up nice and tall, We'll do 10 repetitions. I want you to straighten your leg forwards. Feel this muscle here above your knee. Squeeze. And then bend the knee. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Keep it going. Six. Really squeeze. Make sure your knee's getting all the way straight. Seven, eight, nine, and then last one, ten. Excellent work. Fabulous job. Okay, we are done with all the exercises except for the clamshells. So, we will go back to the clamshells. There's four variations of the clamshell exercise. They're in your list right after the arch lifts and right before the hamstring curl. Okay, so um, I'm going to put my list down. Now I do recommend that um, you do not do this on the ground. I'm about to lie down on the ground. I have not just had a foot and ankle surgery, so it's pretty easy for me to get down on the ground. If you have just had a foot and ankle surgery, I don't recommend trying to struggle down onto the ground. I actually recommend doing this exercise lying on your side, um, on your couch, possibly in your bed, okay? So if you need to pause the video and go get set up, uh, make sure that you put your boot on um, and grab your walker, your crutches, your knee scooter before you move about. Uh, but once you have that set up, go ahead and restart the video and we will move on to clamshells next. Okay, so for clamshells, I am going to lie down on the floor. I'm just going to move this chair and my boot out of the way. So um, I do recommend doing clamshells on both sides. I will be demonstrating on my operative side, which is the left side today. But I recommend that you do these on both sides to strengthen your glutes. 
For the same reason it's important to do the quadricep ex exercises, it's also important to do the glute exercises. This isn't directly related to foot and ankle, but strong glutes are so, so important for proper functional stability down the chain, so all the way down to your ankle when you get back to weight bearing. So these may not seem important, but they are extremely important to do, okay? You want strong glutes when you go back to walking so that you're stable all the way down, you'll have less pain when you get back to walking, and you'll feel more confident. Okay, so you'll lie down on your side. And again, I recommend doing this um, in bed, maybe on your couch. You can support your head with your hand. Knees are bent. You stack your knees and you stack your ankles. Make sure that your hips are also stacked. It's tempting to let the top hip roll back with this exercise. Do not do that. Imagine as though there's a post going straight through your hips. It's holding your hips in place here, okay? So like I said, there's four versions of the clamshell. Version number one, You'll separate your knees and then bring them back together. You should feel your glutes squeezing when you separate your knees. You should not be rolling back like this. Okay, so let's do 10 of these together. One, good, it does not matter how high your leg goes. What's more important is keeping the hips stable, not rolling back and squeezing your glutes. This is number four. Number five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and last one, 10. Okay, that was clamshell number one. Number two, you keep the knees together and you're going to separate your ankles, okay? So this is working a different muscle in your glute complex. So knees together, separate the ankles, one, Two, make sure that you are rotating from your hip. Your hip should be rotating down. Three, four, almost done with these two, five. Do you think these are easy? Because if you do, don't worry. There's two more coming up, and I think they're pretty tough. Last seven, eight, nine, one more, and ten. I'm keeping my hand here on my hip to make sure that my hip doesn't roll forwards or backwards and it stays very stable. Okay, clamshell number three. Um, it's the same motion as clamshell number two, but you're going to begin with your knees and your ankles separated. So this is your starting point right here. Not roll back, right? Make sure that you're super solid on your side. Now you will rotate and tap your knees together like this and then bring it back up. I don't want this, right? We're not clapping the knees. It's a rotation from the hip. So very gently rotate down, that's one. Rotate back up. You have about six to eight inches in between your knees here. And I'm already feeling this. You should be feeling this right here on the outside of your hip. Four, we're really targeting a muscle called the gluteus medius. It's not so much in the back, it's more on the sides. So you should be feeling the burn right here on the side. Six, seven, almost done. Feel the burn, eight. Two more, nine, all right, last one, 10. Oh my gosh, and take a rest. I am definitely feeling that. We have one more clamshell to get through. The motion is exactly the same as what you just did, that rotating down, rotating up, but the starting position is different. So you'll separate your knees, separate your ankles, and now bring your knee up. It chairs in my way a little bit, so I'm just gonna move it. You will bring your knee back into the same plane as your hip. So look down and make sure that your hip and your knee are flush with one another, okay? Make sure that you have a bend in your knee, your leg is not straight, it's bent here. Then you will rotate your hip down and tuck your top knee behind your bent knee, which is stabilizing on the ground. That's one, this one's really hard. Two, you should really be feeling your glute work right here. Three, four, almost done. Five, with this set at least. <laughs> Six, I think this is the hardest one. Whew. Seven, you should really be feeling that burn. Eight, do not let your hips move backwards at all. Nine, one more, and 10. Excellent work, you can take a rest. I recommend rewinding the video just a bit and repeating that same thing on the other side to make sure that you are strengthening both glutes, both left and right, regardless of which side you had surgery on.
Okay, so we went through 10 repetitions of every exercise just now. I want you to go back and do 10 more of each exercise all the way through. Okay, and I want you to repeat this. So two sets of 10. I want you to repeat this one to two times a day, four to five days a week. Early mobility for the foot and ankle, as well as early strengthening of the glutes and the quads in the non-weight bearing phase is extremely important to maximize your potential and recovery when you do the weight bearing, all right? So make sure you're getting through these exercises. It is so important. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions. You can find me at Flagstaff Bone and Joint in the Physical Therapy Gym. You can also send me an email. My first initial, last name, M Duval with one L, that's D-U, V for Victor, A-L, at Flagstaff Bone and Joint, all one word, dot com. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your rehab. You're going to do great.